It's time to get into the ring because I'm going to go over arguments that I've seen the community give over the years or potential discussion points that I feel like could arise about the Doom Eternal versus 2016 lore. I'm going to go over pros and cons of each and then I'll give my own verdict as to the answer that I think. My name's Austin. Let's dive right in to the pros of 2016. It's more true to the original. I mean, we do have the evil UAC Corporation, though in the classic version they weren't actually this bad. This Argent Energy storyline feels like it could fit into the classic games. I'm sure there's some extra additions new characters, but it all still feels there. With this essentially being a reboot of the classic series, I'd say they wouldn't want to go too far and wild with the lore, you know what I mean? Keep it more along the lines of the old games, the classics. Test the water, see how it goes, and then maybe along the way expand it. I mean, the 2016 multiplayer did have Erdak fills with the Empyrean map. Maybe they knew the direction that they wanted to go, just not the specifics. And if you think about it, the DLC multiplayer maps they had these additions, so they could have been writing for Eternal at this point. You can even see a Maker statue in one of the maps, Argent Breach. The next pro is Brutal Simplicity, as the Twitch streamer Devo has called it. I really like that name for it. It means that it keeps it simple while still being fully vicious of rip and tears. Now, although 2016's lore does actually go pretty deep, actually, like with Samuel being a real human with a family, going robo due to cancer, that could be turn on its head in Eternal. We might talk about that one. Uh, maybe Olivia getting into her experimental titanium exoskeleton due to her idiopathic scoliosis. There's a lot of details behind that we could get into. All of these feel sci-fi horror real. And that's the thing, sci-fi horror. The otherworldly multi-universe aspect, even though Eternal is not multi-universe, confirmed by Hugo, just isn't there. Next up, we have Grounded in Reality. Sure, it's not real, but it feels more real than Eternal. It's rooted in that sci-fi horror vibe. This is kind of like how I mentioned it's true to the original. Doom guy is sent to Mars for hitting his officer after he refused to fire onto civilians, and apparently this takes place in 2022, as if 2020 wasn't bad enough. And it all just seems natural, but enough to feel like a video game. Cons of 2016, uh-oh, here we go. First con, stuck to sci-fi horror. Not as, uh, it doesn't give you as many ways to branch out if you just kind of stick in that vein, but if you do stick to one thing, you can do it very right, and Eternal did do it very right. Now, of course, this could be a pro or con, depending on the person, if they like it or dislike it. But if you like the way the story went, this was absolutely a pro. If you like the way it's going now, a con, or con, since we uh, do fight one of those after all. I'm confident that it could have expanded upon this in a different way in this sci-fi horror vibe if they wanted to. I mean, they have really creative storytellers and artists and developers that absolutely know what the heck they're doing. I mean, just look at some of the concept art that they have sometime. They're really good. But the set pieces and the locations that we visit are pretty much hell and Mars and not even really Earth, which still could have happened. I, I get it, it has to fit the story. And it actually did with Eternal anyways. So let's go to some pros of Eternal. It sets up an entire Doom universe and opens the door for even more options. Now, listen up to all this stuff. I'm, I'm curious to see what you think about these pros and cons now in the comments section. No longer are we constrained to the sci-fi horror world. Look at all the places that we go. Earth, Sentinel Lands, Ice Worlds like the North Pole and South Pole, Cult of Space, Doom Hunter Base, heck, Mars, Erdak, all of those. And that's just in the base game. <laughs> 2016 DLC. It was multiplayer, didn't really expand on the campaign in this way of all these lands, like I mentioned, Hell, Mars, Erdak. Even if the places are in the same worlds, we see them in a whole new light. The Blood Swamps are even reminiscent of 2016's Hell setting, and it's a whole different aspect than Necrovol. Same area, same game in a sense, different results. The options of a Doom universe are super varied, and they just got near limitless with how the story has opened up and where we can truly go. Just a quick note, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you like the videos. I have analysis coming out all the time. I think you'll like it. So we also learned the origins of the Doom guy in a whole new world of a backstory. Since it is confirmed that they are one and the same by it themselves, we can even bring Doom 64 into the mix and see the many places in the journeys that the heroes undertaken. We can put the pieces together and how it all ties in, where he came from, how he got his slayer powers, and where he's going to go from here. It creates stories and answers, questions that we may have had, or ones that we didn't even know existed until the new games. Alright, buckle up. I think you know what's coming next. The cons of Doom Eternal lore. Hot topic. Ooh, hot topic. Some say it is too fantastical and comic book-like, that it's just way out there. It's in contrast to keeping the spirit of the original and being grounded in reality. Eternal turned the series from a sci-fi horror to fantasy. Now, some say it's too arcade-like, even though 2016 did have an arcade mode, that's a little different, but Eternal truly sees itself 
and it is unabashedly, unashamed, and unafraid to admit that it is truly a video game. Critics that hold this viewpoint are going to say things that, you know, everything's gone so far, it's gotten silly, and it's just way out there, it's lost its mind. Venturing to other worlds like Erdak slash Paradise slash the game's version of Heaven, all of this would not have been possible in Classic in 2016. And this isn't even from an elitist viewpoint as well, this is not being an elitist. They just aren't a fan of the series having these fantastical aspects. And that's just something that can be respected, as we have to understand that different people have different viewpoints. Connecting Doom Guy in the way that they have takes him from a marine to a superhero. This is a con, or con, compared to the pro in that he goes from being a simple marine on Mars to a nearly godlike superhero that can do regularly impossible things for humans with his ultra super powerful Raider suit and powers from the Divinity Machine. Ooh. Now, sure, the Berserk Fist have always granted extreme strength, even back in 1993, and the Doom comic with its rip and tear was a little bit crazy. But it's not quite on the level that Eternal has taken it. People have screamed of retcons happening to go from 2016 to Eternal, as there have been some different things that have been a little tougher to explain. However, Hugo has said that we will get all of our answers, so we have to just hang in there because it will be coming. So my final answer to channel Regis Philbin of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Here we go. I think that Eternal opened up the door for more possibilities and a lot of different expansion of this whole Doom universe, which is what id wants to do. They want to craft that Doom universe. We got to see places that we would have never gone to before. And of course, like I mentioned, some people don't like that, but it's something to look into for sure. Vast environments and worlds that are only limited by the imagination are now at our fingertips. And ESDF fingertips, if you play like me. WASD, if uh, anybody else. Or arrow keys like I did up until 2018. <laughs> anyway, you know, I'm just going to say you do have to be careful when bringing in the heaven aspect. I know this was or is a huge question mark for a lot of people upon Eternal's announcement, myself included, because I didn't know what it was going to do with it exactly. Now, they're no stranger, even going back to 93, to using biblical references, like Tower of Babel is Necroval, maybe even Argent Tower, Episode 4 of Classic Doom, Thy Flesh Consumed, being phrases from actual Bible verses, the Maker text being Bible verses, so myself and others just weren't sure of the direction that they'd go with it. Because this is something that can make people, whether they hold to faith or not, be upset, because I've seen it in the comment sections on YouTube videos, I can, here's the thing, here's the thing, 2016, I can appreciate those pros of Doom 2016. Awesome game, goes down as a classic for me. Literally, classic, simplicity, grounded in reality. But I definitely love the series, and I'm curious of where it's going to go in the future. Whether or not they go more fantastical, as it does seem to be, or if they would ever go back to the sci-fi roots one day, just strictly hypothetically. I, I just love the series, and I can appreciate any way they go with it, old or new. It's going to be sure to treat the series with respect and push it to grow in the best possible ways that they definitely know how to do. Hugo said that nobody makes better Doom games than id, as it should be, they've been doing it for nearly 30 years now, so I am really curious to see how all of this wraps up. Remember, debates are temporary, but Doom is eternal. My name's Austin, be sure to subscribe to the channel if you like analysis videos like this. Check out my other stuff if you like this, I think you'll dig it too. I'll see you next time.